In this video, we're going to look at linear programming. Linear programming is used to either maximize or minimize a value given an objective and a range of constraints. An example might be to minimize the cost of a project. Another example might be to maximize profit from our sales. In the video, we're simply going to look at setting up a linear programming problem. In later videos, we'll go on to solve, but for now, we just want to set up a problem. The first thing that we need to consider is what we call the objective function. So what are we looking to do? Are we looking to maximize profit? If so, our objective function might be P profit is equal to 2x plus 3y. X and Y are what we call the decision variables, and later in the video, we will look at the decision variables. So objective function, cost, you might want to minimize. Cost, C, might be equal to 3x plus 7y. These are just examples of objective functions. The second thing we need to consider are what we call the constraints. So if I'm looking to maximize my profit, a constraint might be the amount of raw materials I have or the number of man hours I have available. Another constraint might be what we call non-negativity. So if I'm making tables, I can't have minus six tabletops. So I might have to say x is going to be greater or equal to zero, where x is the number of tabletops. We might also look at a slightly more subtle constraint of integer values only. Again, if I'm making tables, I can't have 5.4 tables, yet if I'm making a mixture, I can have 5.4 kilograms. So let's start off with uh, a nice straightforward problem, and then we'll move on to a slightly harder one. We're told a chocolate manufacturer is producing two handmade assortments, gold and silver, to commemorate 50 years in business. It will take 30 minutes to make all the chocolates for one box of gold assortment and 20 minutes to make the chocolates for one box of silver assortment. It will take 12 minutes to wrap and pack the chocolates in one box of gold assortment and 15 minutes for one box of silver assortment. The manufacturer needs to make at least twice as many silver as gold assortments. The gold assortments will be sold at a profit of 80p and the silver at a profit of 60p. There are 300 hours available to make the chocolates and 200 to wrap them. The profit is to be maximised, letting the number of boxes of gold assortment be X and the number of boxes of silver assortment be Y. Formulate this as a linear programming problem. OK, let's first look at the objective. The objective is quite clear here. We want to maximise profit. This isn't the objective function, it's the objective. So if we just put up here, and this is for my notes here, objective we're just looking now to max profit. We want maximum profit from our sales. So that is what we're trying to do. Now, I'm going to define the decision variables. We've actually got them and we've been told here. So I'm going to write here decision variables, D dot V. Now, boxes of gold can be called X. So we can say number of boxes of gold is equal to X. OK, number of boxes of silver we're given now to be Y. So let's write that in is Y. This is what we call now the decision variables or these are what we call the decision variables. You won't always, uh, always be given these and sometimes you'll have to define them yourself. So let's go on and look at this. What we need to consider now are the constraints. So if we write now constraints, with the constraints, we simply set up now some inequalities. We do that by getting the information from the text. And the first bit that I'm going to jump to is just here. So this talks about it taking half an hour, 30 minutes and 20 minutes to make each one of these. So 30 minutes to make a box of gold, 20 minutes to make a box of silver. If we look down here, we're told there's 300 hours available to make them. And this will form my first constraint. So I'm going to make an inequality. And just making reference to making them, let's just put that there, making. Now, I've got 30 minutes, which is half an hour. And I've got 300 hours here. I'm going to put this in hours. You can put it in minutes, of course, but it's going to be a bit of a hassle. So what we can say is one half. Then we're going to have X. Consider X is the number of gold boxes. So it's taken us half an hour for each gold box to make, plus now 20 minutes to make a box of Y. So that's going to be one third of an hour, and that's going to be Y. This now is an expression for the time taken to manufacture X boxes of gold plus Y boxes of silver. And we've only got 300 hours to do that. So there is my first inequality. 
The way I like to do this is to have a, a sketch inequality just here and, and then tidy up later. Just get the information down, we can tidy that up shortly. So let's now look at the next bit of information we've got. It'll take 12 minutes to wrap, so let's grab that up. So 12 minutes to wrap the gold, 15 to wrap the silver. And we're told here we've got 200 hours to do that. So let's set up another inequality. So let's write here wrap, okay? So we've got now 12 minutes, which is what, one fifth of an hour? So one fifth multiplied by x plus 15 minutes, which is a quarter. So a quarter of an hour multiplied by y. This is an expression for the total time of wrapping now x ones of the chocolate and y are uh, x of the gold chocolates and y of the silver and that must be less or equal to 200 and again we can tidy that up later okay let's get some more information let's grab the next bit of information up let's do uh let's do this one what have we got manufacturer needs to make at least twice as many silver as gold this is the inequality that manages to catch a lot of people out we can write this two different ways we can write that y is going to be greater or equal to 2x, or you could say y over 2 is greater or equal than x. I prefer this one. If you're struggling, simply look at this numerically and you'll see now that it holds true. So y is going to be greater or equal to 2x. If you want to hit pause and get your head around that, I can appreciate that part as it's not Often you get it the other way around. Sometimes you put 2y is greater than x, but quite clearly it's not the case. Okay, so there we go. That's what we've got. Now we need to consider the other uh, constraints. x has to be greater or equal to zero. We can't have minus eight boxes of gold chocolates. y must be greater or equal to zero. And in brackets, I'm going to put another constraint. x and y must be integers. Okay, now when you're doing a problem like this, often you don't get penalised for not writing this. But x plus y must be integers. And that kind of makes sense because we can't have 3.7 boxes of silver or 9.8 boxes of gold. x and y have got to be integer values. So here are my constraints. So I've got these constraints and of course we can tidy this up. Let's just tidy this up. So what do I need to do? Multiply that one by 6, which is going to give me 3x plus 2y is less or equal to 1800. Uh, what about the next one? Uh, what are we going to have? Uh, multiply that by 20. So 4x plus 5y will be less or equal to 4000. Okay, and we've got now that y is greater or equal to 2x. We've got x greater than 0. We've got y greater or equal to 0. So, sorry, x is greater or equal to 0. y is greater than equal to 0. And x and y are integers okay so let's put that there again you may not be penalized for that bit but i think it's kind of important to state that so here are my constraints we're now going to look at the objective function the objective was to maximize profit the objective function so let's just write this here objective function can be found now in the text the gold assortments will be sold a profit of 80p, silver at 60p. So profit will be equal to 80x, so however many we sell of the gold, we're going to get 80p for, plus however many we sell of the silver, we're going to get 60p for. And we need to write subject to constraints and then we will list them. Okay, so subject to constraints and these are the constraints that you need to be absolutely clear of. So here's our objective function. Here are the constraints that we have to play by in order to maximise our profit given what we're dealing with. So there we go. Objective function. Profit. Maximise. And I've written objective here. Maximise profit. Profit is this. Subject to these constraints. Here are the constraints. And then we could go on and solve that or look for certain values that will satisfy these and give us a profit. We'll go on to look at that in a later video. So there we go, that's a nice example of setting up a linear programming problem given the information that we've got. Okay, let's move on. A garden supplies company produces two different plant feeds, one for indoor plants and one for outdoor plants. In addition to other ingredients, the plant feeds or the plant feeds are made by combining three different natural ingredients, A, B and C. Each kilogram of indoor feed requires 10 grams of A, 20 grams of B and 20 grams of C. 
Each kilogram of outdoor feed requires 20 grams of A, 10 grams of B, 20 grams of C. The company has 5 kilograms of A, 5 kilograms of B and 6 kilograms of C available each week to use to make these feeds. The company will sell at most three times as much outdoor as indoor feed and will sell at least 50 kilograms of indoor feed. The profit made on each kilogram of outdoor feed, uh, of indoor and outdoor feed, is seven pounds and six pounds respectively. The company wishes to maximise its weekly profit. Formulate this as a linear programming problem, defining your decision variables. So we can see we've got more information here, and it's going to be slightly harder. The key here is not to get bogged down in A, B, and C. We're going to come to A, B, and C shortly, and I'm simply going to highlight this information. So what we're going to do is just highlight this information. So let's just leave that alone. Again, we're looking, our objective is to maximise profit. So hopefully now the objective is, let's write this here, max profit. Hopefully now you can distinguish between what the objective is and the objective function. So the objective is this statement, the objective function is P is equal to some value of X plus some value of Y. Now, we need to define our decision variables. In my last one, they were kind and they told us gold was X, silver was Y. In this one, I'm going to have to do it myself. So what I'm going to say is now, indoor, so indoor, number of kg of kg will be equal, and I'll call this one X. So let's go for number of indoor is going to be X, and then outdoor, so the number of kilograms, so number of kg we will let that be equal to y. These are the decision variables, and we need to be clear about this. The killer mistake here is to have a, b, and c as decision variables. They're not. We can simply use this information to help us find the information that we want. So, there we go, indoor, number of kilo, uh, kilograms of indoor is gonna be x, number of kilograms of outdoor is gonna be y. So let's now start building up some constraints. If you want, you can write now the objective function. We've got the objective function here. If you really wanted to, you could say objective function. So objective function, we now have down here, we've got maximise profit. So we've written objective, maximise profit, objective function. We're going to have P will be equal to £7 for every indoor kilo that I'm selling. So that's going to be 7x plus six quid for every kilo of outdoor plus six Y, and we're looking to maximize this. So subject to these constraints, right now you might want to draw a table. You might want to draw a table. I personally don't like to. I like to pick up the information here and just go straight at it. Let's consider A. Now for this one, we need 10 grams. So for the indoor, we need 10 grams. Now I know that I've got X as the number of kilograms of indoor. So what I can do here is simply, and I'm going to work this in grams. I've got 5 kilograms and 10 grams. So I'm going to say 10 lots of X. So this is now considering the use of each kilogram of the indoor is going to be 10 grams of A. If I look at the use of uh, A in the outdoor, I've got 20 grams. So plus 20 Y, and we've got 5, grams in, uh, five kilograms in total. So what I'm doing here is just picking this information. I've got five kilograms of A, and we're using 10 kilograms here, sorry, 10 grams per kilogram, and 20 grams per kilogram here. So all I need to do now, write in a rough inequality to begin with, that's gonna be less or equal to five kilograms, which is 5,000. As stated in the last example, I'll go on to simplify this. Let's now look at a constraint, an inequality in B. So if I now take this one, I've got 20 grams of B here, I've got 10 grams of B here, and I've got a total of five kilograms. So let's set that up. What we're gonna have, we're going to have 20X plus 10, let's just write that there, plus 10Y has got to be less or equal to 5,000. And again, I can simplify that later. Okay, let's get the next one. Let's go for this one. We've got 20 grams of C we got 20 grams of C, and then we've got six kilograms of C. So each kilogram of indoor feed, indoor feed is X, outdoor feed being used is Y. So let's just put this up. So what we're gonna have for C, we're going to have now 20X plus 
y must be less or equal to 6,000. And I appreciate that that can be simplified a fair bit. That's what I'm going to do at the end. OK, we're now told in the next part that we need to, it says the company will sell at most three times as much outdoor as indoor feed. So we need an inequality for that. So we can say now that 3x will be greater or equal to y. And again, try some numeric values. After a while, you can just read it and write it down. Hence why I'm reading it and writing it straight off. I 100% appreciate that it's not always intuitive and often you get X is greater or equal to 3Y. Just think, plug the numbers in and it should make sense. Okay, we're told now that it will sell at least 50 grams of indoor feed. We called indoor feed X. So what we can say now is X must be greater or equal to 50 and we're not given anything for y, but due to non-negativity, and you might want to just put that there, non-negativity, we can say now that y will be greater or equal to zero. So let's look at our constraints. So let's get our constraints. Do we need to consider anything else? I don't think so. I think we've got all the information. So we've got our objective function. We've defined our decision variables, and we've looked at the constraints. So let's just tidy this up. So we'll have, what can we do? Divide it by 10, can't we? X plus 2y will be less or equal to 500. We've got now, what can we do with this? And divide that one by 10 as well. 2x plus y is less or equal to 500. Um, what can we do? Divide that one by 20, can't we? So x plus y is less or equal to 300. We know that 3x will be greater or equal to y. We know that x will be greater or equal to 50. And we know y will be greater or equal to 0. So these are now our constraints. So what we can do is simply write this up. So we can say now objective function subject to the constraints. And then we would simply now list the constraints. So we've listed them, so they would come in here and we would write that. So the objective is to maximise profit. The objective function is P is equal to 7x plus 6y, where x is the number of kilos of indoor uh, produced, y is the number of kilos of outdoor, subject to these constraints which we found. We could then go ahead and graph that if we wish and look for solutions. So there we go. That's what we've done. We've looked at two problems of setting up now the linear programming problems and then later on we will look to solve them.